Hi right, guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful, it is a spring night here in the collapse of everything in the end times here in Doomsday Trailer. It is a Friday night, it is a Friday night, April 12th, 2024, and uh, we all know what that means. I am absolutely exhausted from dragging sticks and I'm starving and Sandy's show is coming on here in a little while so uh, we all know what Friday night is. It is time to insult all of our intelligences. Can you have more than one intelligence? Anyway, uh, it is time for our weekly ain't gonna happen our agh roundup and i uh, hear from the mainstream media one two three four five seven eight nine it's ten or twelve somewhere in there but of course guys i, I want to thank probably the dozen of you who sent me <laughs> various versions of this story the obvious winner with uh, all, all the rest of them don't even need to be mentioned because uh, we have all we need to hear about ain't gonna happen. This is just the Associated Press's mainstream media version of this. <clears throat> UN climate chief says humans have two years, two years left to save the world. Yes. <laughs> oh God. When, when do we first hear this shit from the from the UN? When were they saying, I th was it 1989 they were saying we had 10 years to save the planet? I, I guess they've lost track of time. So we have until April 12th, 20. 26 to save the planet or the world as the case may be. Take it away. Uh, this is good old Seth Borenstein reporting. I actually like this guy, Seth Borenstein. Humanity has only two years left to save the world by making <coughs> dramatic changes in the way it spews heat trapping emissions. And it has even less time to act to get the moolah behind such a massive shift. The head of the United Nations Climate Agency said, so this is not, you know, the doomer in chief at the UN. This is the, uh, the uh, second in command of the doomer in chiefs. <clears throat> With governments of the world facing a 2025 deadline for new and stronger plans to curb carbon pollution, nearly half of the world's population voting in elections this year and crucial global finance meetings later this month in Washington, United Nations Executive Climate Secretary Simon Steele said Wednesday he knows his warning may sound melodramatic. Melodramatic. Well, it might have sounded melodramatic when about 1970, but he said action over the next two years is, esten is essential. Yes. We, quote, we still have a chance to make greenhouse gas emissions <coughs> tumble, tumble, yes, with a new generation of national climate plans. But we need those stronger plans now, yes. He suggested that climate action is not just for powerful people to address. In a not so veiled reference to the electoral 
calendar this year. Quote, who exactly, who exactly has two years left to save the world? The answer is every person on this planet. Every goddamn one of us. There you go. Has two years to save the world. You have two years. Sancho, well, Sancho Panza, you're not a person, so maybe you, maybe Sancho doesn't have two years to save the world. All right. More and more people want climate action right across societies and political spectrums in large part because they are fueling the impacts of the climate crisis in their everyday lives and their household budgets. I, uh, you know, I keep hearing warnings that climate uh, change is going to affect the price of tequila, but it seems to be running about the same for the past several years so far. Crop destroying droughts have increased the need for bolder action to curb emissions. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, enough of this. Not everyone is convinced. Such warnings will be helpful. This is not Michael Mann. This is Michael Oppenheimer, Princeton University climate scientist. Quote, Two years to save the world is meaningless rhetoric, otherwise known as unadulterated horseshit. At best, it is likely to be ignored. At worst, it will be counterproductive. Close quote. And uh, in case uh, you do not realize this, uh, let Seth explain it to you. Levels of carbon dioxide and methane and nitrous oxide, by the way, Seth, in the last year hit all-time highs, while scientists calculate that the world's carbon dioxide emissions jumped 1.1%, Last year was also the hottest year on record by far. There you go. But we have two years to save the world. So get out there and save the world while you still can. Now, I did not see anything mentioning about a rapidly closing window of opportunity and there was no mention of a game changer uh, anywhere in here. But it is so nice. We still have two years to kick back and enjoy our margaritas. So really, after that one, guys, I could probably shut up here. But we're just going to, I, I, I'm just going to run through these uh, bullshit you're hearing on the mainstream. Well, here's one that ain't going to happen. Salmon fishing is banned off the California coast for the second year in a row amid low stocks. Federal fishery managers voted Wednesday to cancel all commercial and recreational salmon fishing off the coast of California for the second year in a row and only the fourth time in state history because of dwindling stocks. Uh, a February report by the Fishery Council found that in 2023, just over 6,100 fall run Chinook, often known as king salmon, return to the upper Sacramento River to spawn. The average between 1996 and 2005 
was more than 175,000 fish. And, and I could swear that they had a bunch of rain in the year 2023. And people were claiming a year ago that the salmon stocks would return. Well, I guess all of that rain in California in 2023 Let's see what all the rain this year will do for them. All right. Wooden, wooden turbine towers could make wind power even greener. Yes. Uh. Uh, I I I anyway, I, I just can't stand it. All right. Oh, yeah, I forget. So, uh, I, I did have one from, uh, I, I usually leave Will Lockett from Medium.com uh, to, to the end with, with one of his pie-in-the-sky techno-utopians, but even Will Lockett is uh, Will Lockett, Medium.com's reigning apocalyptic techno-utopian. Uh, e even he uh, is climbing on the ain't gonna happen bandwagon in this excellent essay this week, The Shocking Truth of Ethanol Fuels. E10, E10 is worse for the planet than straight gasoline. Yes. The year is 2005. Feel Good Incorporated is playing on every radio station. The Iraq War has just started. The U.S. Renewable Fuel Standard has become law. This fuel standard effectively switched the U.S. to E10 gasoline, which is 10% corn-derived ethanol and 90% gasoline. Well, I mean, why? Well, in theory, ethanol biofuels bio are better for the planet. Hmm. Plants build their bodies from carbon they absorb from the atmosphere, so burning fuels derived from plants doesn't cause a net gain of atmospheric carbon. By blending a little bioethanol into the nation's fuel supply, the U.S. <laughs> the U.S. <laughs> the U.S. <laughs> the U.S. <laughs> hoped to reduce their overall emissions, reduce their dependence on oil imports, and bolster farmers by increasing the demand for corn. But recent studies have suggested this is far from the truth, and E10 fuel is actually worse for the planet than pure gasoline. This revelation came from a study headed by Dr. Tyler Lark, an assistant scientist at University of Wisconsin-Madison Center for Sustainability and the Global Environment. Uh, Dr. Lark found that corn-derived bioethanol is at least 24% more carbon intensive than pure gasoline. Um, Lark found that an earlier U.S. Department of Agriculture study severely underestimated the emissions from land use changes to grow corn, processing it into ethanol and its combustion. And uh, I I anyway, uh, Will breaks all of this down, but even Will Lockett. You know, when Will Lockett uh, 
says that one of these bullshit solutions to climate change ain't going to happen. If Will Lockett is saying it, all right, probably ain't going to happen because everything that Will Lockett says is going to happen ain't going to happen either. So if Will Lockett saying it ain't going to happen, there's no fucking way it's going to happen. E10 gasoline. I I anyway, just another license to rape and pillage the planet. All right. Making cement is very damaging for the climate. One solution is opening in California. Yes. The race has been on to find you know, cement it is a major contributor to climate change. Yes, it's also a problem that's growing as more of the world develops. So the race has been on to find solutions for a material that is responsible for roughly 8% of global carbon dioxide emissions. Now, one California startup has developed a technology that reduces carbon dioxide in the making of cement. Yes. What is this? New, this company, Forterra, intercepts carbon dioxide exhaust from the kilns where cement is made and routes it back into the kiln to make more cement. All right. Here is, we have a new breakthrough in pollution removal. Scientists make breakthrough in pollution removal with liquid that bubbles like cola. Yes. Researchers at ETH Zurich, a university in Switzerland, are capturing air pollution in the dark and nullifying its planet warming potential by exposing it to light. Yes. Another project underway with significant U.S. government backing is geared to vacuuming pollutants from the air. Yes. There you go. All right. This thing with the bubbles works by passing polluted air through a special solution containing photo acids in the dark. All right, moving on. All right. <laughs> We've been hearing about this, uh, what's the name of this city? Neom. The reality of spending $500 billion to build a city in the middle of the desert is starting to hit home for Saudi officials. Saudi Arabia's vision for its sprawling NEOM project has always been hugely ambitious and costly. The financial realities have started to cause concern within the government. Yes. <laughs> anyway, Neom Saudi Arabia. All right, we have a game changer. I cannot believe it took this long to find a game changer. We have a game changer, Sancho Panza. A game changer. Nigeria. Nigeria develops innovative solution to one of the most challenging aspects of nuclear power. 
Yes. Nigeria has come up with a way, uh, you, 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 you know, uh, all those honkies in the United States and Europe and all of those, uh, like, first world countries just, just can't figure out where to put all this nuclear waste. So we're going to let Nigeria, Nigeria uh, figure out how to save the planet with nuclear power. How long have we been hearing this one? <clears throat> Methane eating microbes. Methane eating microbes. So promise for wiping out planet warming emissions. Wiping them out. Feed the methane to the microbes. Methane hits unprecedented levels. Atmospheric levels of the greenhouse gas are two and a half times higher than at any point in the last 800,000 years. Uh, don't worry, microbes. Uh, Let's see. Anyway. I guess fighting methane emissions, quote, is particularly hard because agriculture is so important and we all need to eat. Yes. That's where windfall <laughs> That's for Windfall Corporation hopes to step in. Founded in 2022, the San Mateo, California-based company sells methane-eating microbes, otherwise known as MEMS, as MEMS. Yes. D, D. I'm going to come back at some point to IndyCar's new column. This is kind of like from the No Shit Sherlock. We, the, uh, the famous we, are not in control of climate change at all. There you go. Thank you. Uh, yes. All right, that's another rant for another day. All right, what is the latest in battery technology? Researchers claim to develop the first cal calcium-based battery technology as alternative to lithium. Yes. Recent battery news out of China We'll leave you expecting to see lab photos of researchers with milk mustaches. But these experts aren't wasting time dipping Oreos. Nope. They claim to have invented the first calcium-based battery. That blah, blah, blah. But anyway, we're going to wrap this up in Haiti. In Haiti. Uh, anyone who's checked in with the news of Haiti, but don't worry. You can uh, go back to sleep. You can go back to Haiti. It's all been fixed. After weeks of uncertainty and violence, Haiti's new presidential council is now official as of today. After weeks of tense negotiations, a new transitional framework for governing Haiti over the next two years, you know, while we're saving the world, over the next two years, 
by the UN and every one of us on the planet is saving the world, they will be governing Haiti, a new transitional framework will be governing Haiti over the next two years and creating a path toward eventual elections. Yes, good for Haiti, good for everyone on the planet. What do you think, little dog? But anyway, I gotta wrap this up because I am starving and I think Sandy's show is on. So after having my intelligence insulted, uh, go see if we can find some intelligent commentary over there at Environmental Coffee House because you ain't gonna find any here tonight. Bye guys. All right.